Welcome to tutorial number five. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to write our FFT, our frequency bands, into a texture. Uh, once you've written your frequency bands into a texture, we can do stuff like pass it off to a material and display it on this quad here, or we can display it along our, one of our lines. I've copied the FFT line from a previous tutorial over here, and we're going to pop it onto a material on that. And we can also pass it into shaders, um, which we won't be covering that in this tutorial series, but that's something that you can do down the track. So to get started, I've created a script called FFT to texture, and this will we're going to use this to copy our frequencies over to our texture. So as with all of our previous scripts, we can grab our FFT, the amount of bands, um, and our strength as well, because we want to be able to ramp up and down our strength. We want to choose the band amount and know which FFT we're looking at. So I'll just create a public float strength. Now we'll get that to equal 10 by default. Okay. We're also going to, oh, I better put our void, put our start methods in and put our void update methods in. Uh, what we're going to want to do, we need to create a public texture 2D. So texture 2D is what we store our textures in, in Unity. It's a Unity structure, no object. We want to maintain an array of colors, uh, which we'll be using to um, keep our pixel colors in a single dimensional array. And we want to have a public variable of color. So we want the color that we want our FFT to be colored in. So in this case, we're just going to go from black to white. So white will be our color. Okay, so from here, we can initialize our color array using oh, new color array. Uh, remember how in the previous examples, we can use the frequency bands cast to an integer to get our number of bands here. So that will give us the number of colors in our array. We can create our FFT texture. Oh, sorry. Call it FFT texture, not textures. Make that equal a new texture 2D. And so this will want to know how many pixels it has in both uh, dimensions. So it's a texture 2D, so it asks for a an int for the width and an int for the height. So we're going to pass in our colors.length for the width and just one for the height. So we're going to have a one dimensional array uh, of either eight by one or 64 by one, depending on the amount of bands you've chosen. Now there's a few things we need to set up for, for, uh, for textures. So what we want to do is set the filter mode. Um, and this, this determines how the pixels are filtered between one another. Now, if we have point mode on, there'll be a very clear line between each pixel value and I'll change this later so you can see what I mean. The bilinear will blend smoothly between them. Trilinear will blend smoothly between three. Point will make each pixel just sample the color that it is on. Then we have our FFT texture wrap, wrap mode and we want that to clamp. Okay, uh, clamping will just mean that it doesn't wrap around back to the start. So if we have a straight quad, it means that on the very far right hand side, as it approaches the end, it won't begin to start sampling the pixel on the left hand side. Um, this is something that exists in texture land. So let's just go with clamping for the moment. There may be instances where you may want to change that to wrap. And okay, that creates our texture. Now what we need to do is iterate through all of our colors and update it each frame. So let's just go a quick for loop. 
and we go for all of our colors. And what we want to do is for our color I, we want to use our FFT dot get band value uh, I for our index, and we can pass in our freak bands. Okay, so this gives us our frequency value. We want to times that by our color. And we want to times that by our strength. Okay, pretty straightforward. We've created a texture. We've created a color array. We've created our texture. And in the update, we've filled our color array with our frequency value times our color times our strength. Now, to get these colors into the texture, we need to uh, grab our FFT texture and use a command called set pixels. Now, this command is asking for an array of colors. Luckily, we've got our array of colors here. And we can do that. Now, what we there is another call after this, and I have been known to forget this in the past. So we've got our FFT textures here, and if you notice you've gone through all this process and nothing's happening, you need to make sure that you do FFT texture dot apply. This actually sends all of this color data to that texture from the CPU to the GPU. It's very important. Otherwise you won't see anything happening. So now we've got a texture. We've got a color array, we filled the color array and we're pushing that to the texture. That's all good and well. Oh, well, actually, let's go back into our, let's go back into here. And let's turn that off for the moment. Let's just create an object FFT texture. Let's drag our script onto here. Let's grab the synthesizer FFT. Grab our frequency bands of eight. Okay, if we hit play, we can now see here, very, in a very tiny spot, that we've now got a texture that is, oh, we can't quite zoom in there. It's a tiny little texture there of eight pixels across by one, which have our frequency on it. But what we need to do is apply that to a texture so we can actually see it on an object. So let's go back into our script. And so in this script, what we're going to do is make it have a slot for a material. Uh, let's just give that material. And then we want to have a string for, for the uh, texture name. And we're going to make that the default name for the uh, diffuse texture slot in Unity. And that is, uh, sorry, not bump map, it's base map. Now, in Unity, you can set texture slots in a material programmatically by calling your material and calling set texture. Since we've created the texture at the start here, we can pass the texture that we want, oh sorry, first of all this uh, method is asking for a texture name, so we can set the texture name, and we can pass the texture that we have in. Okay, so now, if we go back here, now I've got this, uh, let's have a look, I've got this quad set up here, and so it's got a copy of this script on it, and so let's Chuck on the synth frequencies. Let's just change that down to eight bands to begin with. Now it needs to have a material reference. So this quad has a material that I've already created called FFT texture. I'm going to click and drag that into the material slot. And this FFT texture, uh, okay, and now if we hit, yep, so it's just a normal uh, URP lit shader. Let's just hit the play button. Yep. So 
So I've got this quad here, which has a FFT to texture script on it. Uh, it's using the synth FFT, got frequency band set to eight, uh, strength set to 10. Now it has a reference to the material that this quad has on it. So I've created a material in here. It's a universal render pipeline unlit shader. And that just has a single base map texture slot. So we're going to use our script to fill that slot and apply it to this quad. So if I hit the play button now, we should see we're getting our frequency drawing to our texture and to our material. Stop that and come over here, change down to 64. And now we get nice one here. So um, we can then apply that same thing to our spectrum line that we did previously. So in this case, I've just got the same line that we did in the previous tutorial. It's using the same shader. And then I can come in here and it's got the same material on it. Sorry. Uh, let me see if I set that. Oh, I've got to add this script to it. Sorry, our FFT to texture. I'm going to choose the synth going to drop our FFT material on it. So this line render is using that same material. So if we hit play, we should now have a line renderer with the same texture applied to it. Now what we can do is we can apply this to different slots in the texture. So in this case, let's try changing this to a lit shader. And what we can do is pass it into the emission slot. So we get it to kind of glow a little bit, which so it pokes through and causes a bit of bloom. So in Unity, a handy trick for finding out the names of these particular maps here is if you right click on the inspector and go to debug, and you scroll down to the materials down here, you can find the names for all of the particular, um, sorry, for all the particular properties. I've got saved properties here, all the textures, and we can find the underscore emission map. So that's what we're going to want to put into the name here for our texture name for our script. So let's change that to Miss, it was a mission map. It was a missive map. Let's have a quick look at that. It is a mission map. Okay. So let's just hit play there. All right. That's looking all right, but maybe we want to pump up our HDR a bit. There we go. So now we get a nice glow on our line with our frequency displayed along it with a texture frequency as well. All right, ready for tutorial six?